I'm Dr. Neil Skolnick, and today we're going to talk about the American Heart Association, American College of Cardiology's new guidelines on the treatment of heart failure. In addition to giving us strong evidence-based guidance, the new heart failure guidelines also discuss two new categories of heart failure, which we'll get to later. Let's start first, though, with diagnosis, its symptoms, an echocardiogram, and a BNP. It's important to realize that the criteria for enrollment in the heart failure trials from a symptom point of view was just New York Heart Association Class II symptoms, which means ordinary physical activity causes fatigue or dyspnea. So it doesn't take a whole lot to opt in with regard to symptoms. Then we get an echocardiogram showing either systolic or diastolic dysfunction and an elevated BNP or NT pro BNP. Let's go on now to treatment, starting with HEF-REF or heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. This is defined as an ejection fraction less than or equal to 40%. Guideline-directed medical therapy includes four classes of medicines, all of which have class one, meaning strong evidence, to support their use. Those classes are one, renin angiotensin system inhibition with either an ARNI, which combines an ARB with a niprolysin inhibitor, or an ACE or an ARB with preference for using an ARNI. Beta blockers, either bisoprolol, carvedilol, or sustained release metoprolol. Three, Mineracorticoid receptor antagonists, MRAs, either spironolactone or aplerinone. And four, the new kid on the block with class one evidence, SGLT2 inhibitors, which are recommended now whether or not someone has diabetes. It's important to use all four classes of medicines in people with HEF-REF. Also, use diuretics as needed for fluid overload. Make sure to refer patients onto cardiology if they have an ejection fraction less than or equal to 35% for consideration of an implantable defibrillator. Now, the most exciting new area, in my opinion, for those of us in primary care, are the recommendations for HEF. PEF, or heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, which is defined as an ejection fraction greater than or equal to 50%. I say this is exciting for two reasons. One, previously, there was no evidence-based effective therapy for patients with HEF-PEF. Two, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more HEF-PEF as we begin looking for it now that there's effective therapy available. Who do we look for it in? Patients with hypertension, patients with diabetes, obesity, who have New York Heart Association Class II symptoms, dyspnea on exertion. Treatment recommendations for HEF-PEF are grade 2A, meaning moderate level of evidence, to use an SGLT2 inhibitor. SGLT2s have been shown to decrease heart failure hospitalizations and cardiovascular mortality. Note that the SGLT2s are now recommended across the spectrum of heart failure. Grade 2B, or weak level of evidence, supports the use of MRA, ARNI, and ARBs in selected patients whose ejection fraction is on the lower end of the preserved range. Now, the new categories. First new category, heart failure with mildly reduced ejection fraction, which is defined as an ejection fraction between 41 and 49 percent. Here, the SGLT2s have grade 2A recommendations. Grade 2 recommendations are to consider the use of evidence-based beta blockers, ARNI, ACE inhibitor, or ARB, and MRAs, particularly among patients with EFs on the lower end of the spectrum of mildly reduced ejection fraction. The other new category of heart failure is heart failure with improved ejection fraction. Here, there's clarification that in patients who have heart failure with improved ejection fraction that used to have heart failure with reduced ejection fraction with an EF now above 40, guideline-directed medical therapy that was used for heart failure with reduced ejection fraction should be continued to prevent 
relapse, even if the patients are asymptomatic. This is a lot of new information and important information for an important clinical problem where our treatment makes a big difference. I'm Neil Skolnick, and this is Medscape.